Hello, and welcome to this video on the flu season and the vaccine. The timing seems right, as the worst of the flu will be arriving in the coming weeks. First, what is the flu? The flu is a virus. It cannot be treated with antibiotics, and asking for them is stupid for many reasons. To understand why you receive prophylaxis and not antibiotics, it is important to understand what the flu is. Influenza is highly contagious and is more common during the colder months of the year. But this is not due to the climate itself, but rather it is attributed to the greater amount of time spent indoors and in proximity to other people, who are likely non-symptomatic carriers of this particular virus. There is no way to deal with the fever, mucus, sore throat, headache and lethargy, other than rest, fluids and time. You cannot take any particular countermeasure and this includes vitamin C and supplements. The reasons you catch the flu are particular factors in the host, like the presence of target receptors, the availability of enzymes in host cells, the immunocompetence of the individual, your specific immunity to the strain, and the ability of the immune system to control the viral replication process. The viral factors are the ability to bind to the host cell, the ability of the virus to shed, Restriction of certain cytopathogenic effects. Escape from the immunosurveillance system. And this is through either the pressure of the immune response or recombination with other different viruses. And modulation of the immune system in response to this. Influenza gets into its new host by being transmitted fluid to fluid, normally in the form of aerosols and droplets. These then enter the host through the respiratory tract here, it binds with columnar epithelial cells in the trachea and other parts of the respiratory tract. The flu virus itself is structured as a small sphere like a marble. This structure is known as the influenza virion. The outer part is called the membrane, and the virus RNA is contained in this ball. The influenza virus is distinct from some others in that it is enveloped by a bilipid membrane. This is also known as an enveloped virus. In the lipid membrane are protein spikes. These are glycoproteins. They are also divided into two categories known as HA for hemagglutinin and NA, neuraminidase. These are proteins that determine the subtype of influenza virus. There is an external layer of approximately 500 of these spike-like projections. The HA and NA are important in the immune response against the virus. Inside the virion are viral RNAs eight of them in the influenza A viruses. These are the genetic code, and they create one or two proteins each. Each RNA segment, as they are called, consists of RNA joined of several proteins. These segments are the genes of the influenza virus. This RNA is what enables the virus to continue existing. It codes for the variety of surface markers and other things. The surface are the mentioned hemagglutinin and neuraminidase markers. In order to get this membrane, the influenza virus uses the host cell's own membrane, much like cannibalism. Like most viruses, it is replicated by the host cell's DNA replication system. This continues until it reaches a point where the virus begins moving the virus RNA to the cell wall. Here, the RNA is encapsulated by the cell. The cell wall then becomes the virus's capsule. Over time, the cell wall is compromised, and eventually, the host cell lysis. Once on the outside of the cell, the individual virions express their surface markers in an attempt to find a new host. In order to reduce the impact and number of people who are made ill by the flu virus every year, manufacturers have developed their vaccine to use the membrane coat or protein spikes as markers. The markers designate what classification the virus is given. The three relevant to the flu vaccine are as follows. The H1N1, which caused the Spanish flu and swine flu the H3N2, which caused the Hong Kong flu of 1968, and the type B flu, which is a slow mutating virus, and so immunity acquired for this lasts longer, but it only infects humans, ferrets, and seals, and as a consequence, tends to hang around considerably more. The vaccine manufacturers achieve this by creating antibodies. These are against the spikes, and may protect against infection. The Na protein is the target of the antiviral drugs Rolenza and Tamiflu. Also embedded in the lipid membrane is the M2 protein, and this is the target of the antiviral adamantanes, 
and a mantine dyne and remantidine. The important thing to understand with this is that the flu virus undergoes genetic drift at a much higher rate than most organisms. This is because their DNA, in the form of RNA, is not as stable when compared to the DNA in the host cell. As a result, mutations occur frequently. Influenza A also experiences another type of mutation, and it is called antigenic drift. This results in a new subtype of the virus. It is caused by a sudden change in antigenicity. This is caused by the recombination of the influenza genome. This occurs when a cell becomes simultaneously infected by two different strains of type A influenza, leading to an unusually broad range of hosts susceptible to influenza A. As a consequence of these two factors, the influenza vaccine needs to be updated each year, and this is done by a host of experts at the World Health Organization. This new vaccine accounts for the new possible antigens on the surface, from known samples of the flu. Normally it is updated each year by a panel of experts at the World Health Organization. Their decisions are often guided by modeling by other experts who are able to predict the next strain that's likely to arise with significant impact on the global population. For this same reason, the flu vaccine is a problem for the immune system. To summarize how the immune system works, it starts with a huge range of possible variants at birth. These are gradually activated as the human is exposed to new things. At the same time, the immune system is gradually losing variation as time goes on. Because they are not being used, they are being discarded. This means that there is a point at which limited immune responses remain. This is where the flu slips through the immune system's gaps. Once this has happened, the body then needs time to find a replacement or something that will respond to the external markings on the flu virus. Originally, these vaccines were made in eggs and then they were made in cell culture. The future appears to be in recombinant DNA and plant-derived vaccines though. The vaccine itself was grown this way because it needed a living host that would not have any effect on how the flu worked. As mentioned earlier, the Spanish flu and bird flu are related. And this also gives hope in that vaccines can train the immune system to respond to a broader range of possible targets. And it is why it is prophylactic and not a treatment in and of itself. By giving the immune system a relatively small, inert, safe sample of the flu that is not actually active, alive, or able to do any harm to the host, the immune system finds a suitable response before it needs it, and therefore this active, suitable response is put into storage because it has finally been used, and it can respond, or in this case be brought out of storage by the immune system, to respond to the flu once it does hit. In the last 12 months or so, there have been several considerable failures of the flu vaccine though. This largely owes to not a failure of the flu vaccine itself, or the contents, as both have done what they are meant to do, but rather the predictive system used and the lack of a larger, wider scale vaccination program. In the first place, the modeling system is only a predictive system. It is not perfect and it is not without error. As a consequence, a simple single strain which can slip through may actually avoid all of the issues as there are about 12 other types of flu that are not accounted for in the three types that are normally used. If one of these gains particular virulence, it can have wide sweeping effects. The content of the vaccine itself worked the way it was meant to, it just didn't provide the coverage needed. And the reason why only three are selected is the prohibitive cost of manufacturing this on a wide and large scale. Three particular variants are hard enough to make in time and distribute sufficiently to cover enough of the population. If they were to add more particular flu viruses to this, it would become unreasonable and untenable for the companies that are producing it to do so in quantities needed to provide the necessary benefit. For those who complain about how the flu vaccine has not stopped them from getting the flu, in most cases, it won't prevent you from getting all the kinds of flu out there. What it will do was reduce the severity of symptoms and the amount of time you'll be sick for. As a consequence, those who are infected can really only enter into their own personal isolation and quarantine by staying at home, staying comfortable, being hydrated, and resting for several days whilst the flu passes. There are simply no alternatives if the flu vaccine has not had the complete and desired effect. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.